know about relationships, but you're wrong. Listen, there's no magic bullet. I'm teaching life skills. Yeah. When you sick, you need medicine. It don't always taste good. Oh, nah. But it'll get you better. You, you, you need this medicine. Yeah. It ain't gonna always taste good. But this is what you need. Men and women, bottom line, we need to have the conversation. Your partner wants to give up control, but only if you know how to drive. This is about being the best you you could ever be, whoever you are. I don't care if you're a man, a woman, LGBTQ, space alien. I'll save anybody. I don't care. I'll teach a hedgehog how to have a threesome. What do you mean by that? Look, you don't have to listen to me, but you're wrong. Listen, I know I'm great. And I know you're thinking, Dante, there's no way I could be like you. But you could be me, you know why? Because you know who I was before I was me? I was you. you. Man school, 202. Better hear what I've got to say because you won't get it again. I'm not an alpha male. I'm not a beta male either. I'm just a better man. Better man. Well, put your happiness first, because if you don't, they won't. GYBB, get your balls back. WWDD, what, what would Dante do? The sexual revolution is being podcasted, and I am excited. Uh, this is going to be a good one. Uh, this is a special show, Harry. I don't know if you've heard. Hmm. Um, I did hear. I did. Now, now, I you've have, said that before. I might have said that 400 times before, but this time I really mean it. I'm nice. I'm, Finally. Some honesty. You don't have to lie for a change. Exactly. Roll. You know I'm. You know I'm good, Dante. I'm having a tough time keeping these gators down. But otherwise, why would you ask me that? I'm doing um, phenomenal. How dare ask, you? How just, dare I, you? I know I have a couple of our clients that listen to us curse me out when I ask them how they're doing. When they're so, doing well, they start they going, go, "What the fuck is that?" What do you mean by that, right? So, um, Andre's running a little late. Um, he will be with us. But he's on his way. He's doing, he's doing a lot of artsy shit now. Photography and sculpture and in between you know, push-ups and, and dips. Growing, doing, yeah. Growing weeds in his ass, all kinds of. And like, mixing different. protein powder. So, um, why don't you do the honors and do the uh, introductions? Today? Well, well, yeah, I will. Uh, we are lucky enough to have uh, a person who is. I, I, she, I would say she's going to be the ultimate wing girl. Uh, she, she has the flirtmethod.com. Uh, she helps men become more attractive to women and she coaches everybody on that marnie the wing girl everybody give it up for marnie up. the wing girl up, marnie. Hi, thank, guys. You. thank you for coming thank you for thank coming you. on this is gonna be good you know why i have a philosophy about i have a philosophy about lady wing girls i say never ask a woman uh any relationship advice that's my that's my my i hear thing. you i agree with that most women have no idea what they're talking about and give horrible advice Okay. Oh, they, wow. Uh, Perfection. Wow. Well, thank you, everybody. This has been a great place. podcast. This is a good podcast. We're just going to shut it down. You want to do your <laughs> yeah, plugs? Exactly. Don't <laughs> listen to me. But I will, I'll will. i tell you something. Most women give advice from a... They don't mean to do it, but it's from a, a, not a, a selfish place for themselves because they advise men, but in their mind, they're thinking about men that they're already attracted to. So that advice that they're putting out there isn't for men who are my clients or for men who potentially listen to this podcast. Right. Therefore, men who are already getting the attraction and have the success with women. Well, you know, it's funny. It's funny you say that because um, I I put it a little different. I said, if you want to know how to hunt deer, you ask the hunter, not the deer. Yeah. So, oh, trust me. I get that. I get that statement on my YouTube channel all the time. Don't <laughs> ask a fish how to catch a fish. I, I hear. I get it. I totally understand. Right. As I said, most women are bad at it. And and I and I and you know I think that there's always exceptions to the rule. Um, I I think that you know that takes a level of empathy to to see it from somebody else's perspective who who from for the most part, you know, doesn't he doesn't doesn't have that experience. To mm -hmm. it, it takes a lot of empathy and to 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 look at it from somebody else's perspective and say. If I was in this perspective, these are the these are the obstacles and stuff that I would have to deal with. Yeah, so well, even even as a woman to be ego free and say out loud the things that you're actually attracted to that may potentially make you sound superficial. Mm -hmm. uh, they're not things that women want to be announcing all the time. So that's that's more challenging for women. And on the flip side, 
it's really difficult to understand men and the position that men that are listening to this show or men that I work with, what they're going through on a day-to-day basis. Because a lot of women have a different perception of men. They think of men who are players, men who are jerks, men who are constantly leaving them or leading them on. So they don't see this whole other side of unbelievable, awesome men who have a little bit lower confidence with women and uh, who don't have the comfort levels to do the things that these other guys do. Well, I think also, you know, when a lot of times you have women who are pursuing these guys who are, um, you know, what they call players and say, because they're picking those guys. Yep. And a lot of times they don't have the value to step up to those guys in the first place. And so a, a, a guy who's accustomed to being, a, you know, having women attracted to or having women approach them, and then you're, you know, you're a five and you're like, oh, I'm going to give him. In. And he's, and he's like, oh, Yo, you want some you want some free pussy? And he was like, yeah, I'll take some. And then all of a sudden she in her mind, she's created this relationship. What up, Dre? Hi. <laughs> hey, Andre. The, the, uh, he's, you know, and then she's created, you know, they, she's created this whole movie in her head about how she thinks this is going to play out and Ooh. never even considered that he don't like you. He, uh, you know, that there was that book. He goes like, yes. he's not that into you. He's just not like, that into you. Uh, yeah. Or like that you. I'm going to make him like me because I'm going to do all my tricks that I know of as a woman to change that around. And we become, we become fixated on these guys as challenges for us. Oh yeah. I, I, I agree with everything that you're saying. Totally. And then, and then the ego, the ego comes into play where because of her ego and the fact that she, then she doesn't even know if she really likes this guy. It becomes more about the Most challenge. Most often they don't. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She, she doesn't like him. And now it becomes about the pursuit. And then as the, and as long as he doesn't fall victim to the pursuit, she'll never even question whether she really likes him in the first place, because it's not the point. It's about the win. And so removing the ego is 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 really important. It's interesting you said that. Yeah. Give me a, give me an idea of um, what kind of advice you would get. Andre, do I need to fill you in on what's going here? <laughs> yeah, um, women need to to know what type of man that they want, and then the dudes got a little bit of confidence, and and they need more confidence. All right, that's All right. true. Thank that's fair. <laughs> there, you go, baby. there, summed up. There we go. Show's there we over. Go. All right, here. let's shut it down. Let's well, do the plugs and go again. Plugs again. <laughs> let's uh, wrap up. It's I'm here for you, Bill. You know what I'm saying? Marty, can I? All right, Marty, can I ask you how do you get into being a wing girl? Like, how does this come about for you? How did this? Uh, I was happen? drunk at a rabbi's house and I made a joke after having a very successful night of introducing men to women and helping them uh, get numbers and get get the attraction that they've always wanted so i went to the singles mixer and i did not like anybody there so i chose to help the guys that were there go up and approach women help them start conversations when it was going well i would leave that's hilarious feedback afterwards Mm. and then i came home and i i was a little bit tipsy and i said to my roommate i loved what i did this was so much fun i want to be a wing girl for guys i want to tell them what women want and he's like no way guys Mm. will never want that service exactly what you said before like they don't want to ask a fish how to catch the fish or whatever. No, the fish I, I don't I don't think I don't think that guys won't do it. I just think that for the most right, part, they, right. they shouldn't do it because most women don't have the empathy and can't remove the ego to look at right. it from a perspective. I mean, and that was know. his exact point of view as well. He's like, guys don't want this. You'd have to like throw in sexual favors in order for them to pay you to give them any advice. That's what that's what he said, which I actually was glad that he said all of that because I I don't like hearing the word no. If he just said yes, I would have laughed about the idea and never and thought about move. it again. Mm-hmm. He said no. And I said, I don't think you're right. I went into my room, posted an ad on Craigslist, 1.30 in the morning. By the next morning, I had over 75 guys who were interested in this concept because mm-hmm. you know, at that time it didn't exist. And so I started. And then the first six months, it was a live interactive service. I had 23 girls working with me and we went out with men in teams of two and we helped pick up women for men. But then I started to notice that most of these men really wanted a lot of information from us. They didn't have the basic skills down. Like you were talking before about other guys who are really good with women. They mm. built up this. Yeah, that's, that's the 10,000 hour. It's definitely yeah, a 10,000 exactly. hour. Thing, yeah, I just read that book. That's funny that you just mentioned it. But like Malcolm Gladwell. It, 
Yeah, you know, ten thousand hours. They, yeah. they have that, and the guys that I was going out and coaching didn't have that basic level. Either they didn't have a good father figure, or they didn't have lots of guy friends who were successful with women. They didn't have that example to learn from, and they didn't also have an understanding of women. So they ended up asking me tons of questions, and then I learned from that experience that I needed right. to provide them with the basics first, and then that's how my my company started. And it's been now. 17. What's the um? How many years? Seventeen. Wow. Wow. And that's what you do full time now. That's what I do full time. I've worked with hundreds of thousands of men all over the world. That's dope. And I tell them what women want. Now, did you start with, was this like a Jewish mixer or I, I heard yes. you said something? Oh, OK. OK. So, now, here's here's hence the, the thing. rabbi. It would have been really hence the rabbi. It really could have been hanging out. <laughs> yeah. well, now, here's, here's the thing. I, I um, man, like Jewish guys that I've consulted because I mean, I, I've been consulting with guys for much less time. Because I just I I uh, I just I would just give it away like I used to give like I, I I would be a play in a place and somebody would be like their body posture would be and I'm like yo come here hey, oh that's amazing like what are you what are you doing like what are you, and I kept you know I would do that Harry would uh, you know like I yeah. would just Harry will say, I'll hear somebody say happy life happy wife and I'll go eh, I got come come here I need to talk to you and so yeah uh, all um, the time on the I street love that. and that had to be that had to be as long as you've known me right huh I mean definitely I as mean, long as Dre know me right for sure I mean that's how we started if we if we just go from the time we just started the podcast before that it's been nine years of helping people wow. yeah and I'm yeah. sure you were helping people before that yeah I mean I was I was so I was a male stripper for 10 years oh, and wow. so I had that I to understand you in order to understand female attraction mm -hmm. you if you can't understand it you don't you don't eat you know yeah. and then I ran and I, I ran I managed a few ladies on the, on the escort side and so I I had to deal with the the relationships of that and the and the the, the aspect of that so so you get um, the psychology of it that's amazing. yeah yeah I mean a, yeah. a practical you know, the practical. I mean if you go to a therapist and you they talk yeah okay he's learned all, but he don't have the case study that I, you know, yeah. I, I literally was in it. So, um, what's so it's just it was just something that I always did, and I I didn't think it was something I could do until we started to do it. And even after the podcast, I I just was doing it for free. I was just giving it away. So I know, which is I probably should have met you seventeen years ago. Right? Exactly. No, but that but honestly, that gave you your base in the very yeah. beginning. I felt like I was giving it away. I had people who would pay for a three hour outing with me for a very minimal cost. I would end up being with them for seven hours because I loved it. What, what do you charge for something like that? Like a three hour outing? So I, now I really don't do them very much anymore. Most of my stuff is online, but I charge $3,000 for 3000 for three hours. An hour. Three, that's great. That's great to go out with them. I, I you know, it's an interesting thing because, uh, I, I just don't want to go out with nobody. You know no, I mean? like no, I, no. That's why yeah. I don't do it anymore. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. Like I have two children now and a husband. I'm like, go. I, I fall asleep by nine o'clock. I have other girls who now right. go out with people and do that. But, stuff. You, but, but you have plenty of information and stuff. Oh, on gosh. YouTube yes. And, and I, all I over the place. keep up to date with my information. I do a podcast once a week. Um, I interview five different women every single week, different ages, different races, different uh, places that they live. So I can keep up with what's going on in in the dating space now yeah. let me ask you this do you really think it's that it, it's really that different i mean I, I understand that in terms of like social media in terms of dating apps and stuff those things change but the but the no. basic principles is all the same all did, absolutely all the same i don't know did you ever read the book um by david buss called the evolution of desire no i've never read it's that a really good book so he, yeah. he i'm gonna totally gonna quote this incorrectly but you'll get the gist of what i'm gonna say but so he he went around the world and he would research tons of different cultures about what attraction meant to them, mainly women. So he went to tribes in Africa. He went to New York City. He went to China, like South, all over the world, looking to see what the basic fundamentals were for attraction. And he found there was a collective of, I think it's like 10 different things that build up attraction for women. And they're, they're standard. They are a standard across the world. There were a few mm. different uh, variations based on different societies, but most of them all fell into the exact same categories and all ranked them in the same order as well. So it's, it's what were some of those uh, things? Oh God, it's uh, intelligence, social proof, social circle, um, 
uh, status was one of them. I haven't read that book in so long, but like I, for, I forgot what the other ones were. But they're they're the basics. So like what you were talking about. What's the name about, of the book again? Let me. It's I, called I, The I, Evolution of Desire by David okay. Buss. So he's uh, I think he's a professor at Harvard or mm. or uh, in Boston. I, I somewhere else. I forget. Um, I and always actually, love when those one professors of our first get on fed up podcast. with studying medicine and go, you know what? I've had <laughs> enough. Of- I'm going a, I'm to a write a book women. on how to fuck. Yeah, I've had <laughs> yeah. enough of looking at this, tele- this microscope. Well, you know, I, I, these new platforms. Yeah. Well, like I had a lot of practical, practical kind of knowledge. But the thing that really kind of flipped me, I read. Uh, we actually had him on the show. It was uh, Dr. We had Christopher, Christopher Ryan, Ryan. Sex at Dawn. He wrote this book called Sex at Dawn. And it deals with it really deals with the instinctual aspect of attraction, like on a base, on a real visceral level, which is something that's a, it's, uh, you know, I've, I've, I haven't read it in a long time, but it, it so you find out kind of that there is this there is this I, I mean, I don't have to tell you, but there's a subtext in, in everything that you do. There's this subtext. Um, you are communicating even when you think you're not a com- you're not communicating everything that you do the permeal you know if every your your true personality permeates everything that you do so especially and it's got a lot of Jewish guys that I've had, they are the worst not worse no Indian dudes pr- maybe worse than than Jewish you're saying guys. as far as dating lack of dating skills. well because the Culturally, culturally, it's the anxiety and the pressure. It, That's where the, it comes for both of them. It's from their moms. Right. The mom. And it's this expectation. And then there's also this thing about you don't have to worry about social. Go to school, get your education, yeah. get your degrees, make your money. And what's interesting is that like the same way that you learn how to study and learn to be productive and learn how to handle money or learn how to handle business or engineering or whatever. You you still need your ten thousand hours socially, so if you don't have absolutely, that, especially today, way more than before, because yeah. like in the past, so I, I I coach men all over the world who are not not just Jewish guys. That's what I started with in the beginning. Right, but, right, right. Um, right. Yeah, I understood but, that, but I was just saying, I, yeah, it, that's no, a for, very for, difficult. Yeah, group but for to those for those cultures specifically, like it's sort of outdated because society's grown up differently. Like in the past, it was, right. okay, grow up, be a doctor, and then you're successful. You'll get the women. It's fine. Right. It doesn't right. work like that anymore. No, no. Your, your social proof and the way that you interact and integrate with other people is actually what elevates you to that other level. You can be a great doctor, but you can be the greatest doctor if your social skills are on point. Right, right. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, Here's what, I, what give me an idea of like what what on a fundamental level, how you would start, like, how do you start from the beginning? Like if you get a guy who's really well, I figure not- out what's going on with them and I figure out what their struggles are. So some guys come to me and they have an issue with one woman that they've been hung up on for three years. Some guys come to me and they have an issue with all women in the sense that they put themselves up out there as much as possible. Uh, but they don't get any reactions or responses from women. So they mm-hmm. cast a wide net. They have very little confidence in themselves, very uh, a very small view of their own self worth, and they yeah. get nothing back, which is obvious that they would get nothing back. So it's it's different for every single guy, but there's there's like a few different prototypes of the guys that come to me. But what are the, what are the, yeah. give me an idea of the prototypes that you like, you know? Yeah, it's the guy who's super successful, who can speak in front of a of a room of five hundred people, but can't go up to a, a woman and approach her and ask her for her phone number. It's another right. guy who is Mr. IT, who's very technical and logical, who has difficulty talking to women as soon as he goes up and talks to her, his brain turns to mush and he can't think of a single thing to say. Mm -hmm. It's the guy who doesn't have any experience with women and who is 36 years old and is kind of frightened of women because he's yeah. he's ultimately afraid of rejection. It's right. the guy that constantly gets thrown into the to the friend zone because he doesn't know that it's okay to put your sexuality out there. So right. again, those those are the guys that I work with and so each of them come with me with different issues or different things that they want to work on and then I send them on on different paths right. based on what their needs are. What do you find is the the most common mistake that guys make? They do not go uh after what they want. They do not ask for what they want. They try to cover it up and hide it um, or they're not clear on what they want. So they'll take anything that they can get. Hmm. They settle. Settle. They settle. Because, yes. Or they well, settle for being lonely because they're doing it all wrong. Yes, absolutely. Well, well, or they well, settle for a bitchy woman. It's interesting because they'll they'll also um, 
they don't think they're worthy of what they they don't think they're worth they're worthy of what they're asking for. Yeah, because their so, evidence I mean, is that women reject them. So, OK, I'm going to take any woman I can get woman I can get. She can treat me horribly and disrespect me on a constant basis. And yeah. It's fine because I'm not going to get anything else. And also, as as he as he lets this woman treat her disrespectfully, she loses a track for him every totally. time he allows that to happen. Totally. He he finds she finds him a little less attractive each time. Yeah. And so it's a, it's an interesting it's an interesting cyclical dynamic that happens where you just you really it's almost like they're working against themselves. Um, the the other thing that I think is really interesting is, um, you know, how do you teach confidence? Do you know what I mean? Because ultimately, yeah. that's what you got to do. Yeah. Well, you teach confidence by first helping people figure out who they are. And I know that's so unsexy and it's not like, oh, like this is the magic pill to getting me attraction from women. But as you just said before, when you were describing yourself, like, Mm -hmm. first of all, you were a stripper, so you're already super confident with your body. And then you started to like look at women, acknowledge women, listen to women, figure out women. You had the experience there. But during that time, I'm guessing you were also figuring yourself out. Who am I? Who can I be to these women? How can I communicate with them so that they respond to me? Well, so you know what's mo- you know what's interesting even about that? Guys who I know who are strippers, right? There was a there's there's all people always think that there's this caveat that it kind of works out that way. And it really doesn't because what oh, happens is the strippers will they have access to so many women. And because they have access, there's a confidence that comes with the fact of having options, right? Yeah. The minute they stop stripping, there is no options. And then they are the worst because they right. don't, they have don't that. know what to do yeah. right, without that platform. So I help people build up their own platform. So like, again, very unsexy. But first, you figure out who you are, what your values are, what you want, what you'll allow, what your boundaries are with women, what the rules are to be with you. Mm-hmm. And then you figure out what kind of women you want in your life. You figure out who you want to be surrounded by, how you want to feel when you're around those women. Knowing those things instantly, it takes a, a while to get those things to mean something to you. Yeah, but right yeah. away, they, they provide confidence for you. Because again, you're not casting that wide net. You're saying, no, I'm not going to allow a woman to talk to me like that. So therefore, no. I'm not going to date you. That's That builds confidence up over time. And yeah. then in yeah. tandem with that, I'm pushing them into social interactions that make them a, like slightly uncomfortable every single day mm. so that they can get used to that- it. Yeah, work that confidence muscle and build it. It's exactly what I did. I used to be very shy, very insecure, very uncomfortable, total an- overanalyzer. I'm Jewish. I have to be totally overanalyzing right. everything every second. But what I did for myself was when I, I was backpacking when I was younger, I was with my best friend who was super outgoing. She would go outside, come back with 10 new friends. I couldn't do the exact same thing. Mm-hmm. I couldn't figure out how to speak. And so I pushed myself to go out every single day and speak to 20 people, literally just say hi to them. And then I was allowed to go home. And it took me two and a half hours the first day I had to do it. And I'm a, I was a cute girl, a cute 23 year old girl <laughs> going out and saying hi, like nobody was going to slap me or punch me or throw a drink in my face. And I had difficulty for two and a half hours. It took me to complete that mission. The next day I went back out. It took me an hour and a half. The next day I went back out. It took me 30 minutes. The next day I went back out. I was done in 10 minutes. <laughs> and then I went to that next hurdle it's interesting because i have a same i have a similar kind of technique what i do is i i i i call it so it came from an analogy that i did it's uh i say you gotta lay five bricks a day so i, like I the, 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 the the analogy was that if you go in your backyard and you lay five bricks you take cement and you lay five bricks right um at the end of the year you will have a huge wall and okay. the wall doesn't care whether you enjoyed it or you didn't enjoy it, whether you excited, whether you were inspired, but there's a wall. And because you've done it so many times, the bricks at the top are done much better than the bricks at the bottom because you just do repetition. You come through the. So it also gets to the point where I, I'll make a commitment. I'll make the guy make a commitment to talk to five women every day. I love it. Um, with no with no no expectation. Um, no expectation. No agenda. I don't want you to get the number. I don't want you to. I, I don't even want you to just talk to the pretty women. I want you to the ones you find unattractive, an old lady or this. And so that became. Yeah, that you got to start at the bottom first and work your way up. I love that. When, That's what I do. And then it becomes such a it becomes a chore 
right? That so I do five guys, five women a day for eight weeks. Mm-hmm. When the um, by the time the second week is gone by, right? So the second week, it's something it comes out to something like eighty-five women a, yeah. a, a eighty-five was it a five thirty-five women a day? It's like seventy women in two weeks. You're more into the fact that you so this is interesting about men because men have that you know that when you say that women are, a lot of times women can't remove the ego and see the empathy to give advice what's interesting is that you never hear the terminology a woman of her word so and i'm not saying that there's not women that keep that that don't keep their word but there's no expectation the expectation of yeah. being fickle and 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 fluid is is accepted yeah. um so what's in, but a guy, it, that's a big thing for, you know, if you're not a man of your word then how are you a man and it's, and so the commitment that they make me, the word, I make them give me their word that they'll do five a day. And then it becomes more about the commitment that they made to me than what they're actually doing, which yeah. allows them to remove themselves emotionally from the anxiety and it becomes, oh, I got Dante's gonna jump on my shit if I don't. Right. And, I then, task. and then it's a task. And then, yeah. and what happens is that task becomes more about me than about them, which, which is weird because they're trying to get a date. And then they are able to be more of themselves. They, they, they become more natural in their self and more confident in their own self because it becomes about the task as opposed to. Yeah. The and they're doing it within a community as well. So therefore it becomes fun. It's not this daunting task that they're doing by themselves where they feel like a big freak. They're doing it as a part of a team. That's now, when you say out of a team, what do you take a few guys? I mean, I'm saying you and him. Oh, you're, yeah. All you're, oh, right, right, right. You're a team and you're trying to accomplish something. And right, that's right. something that men are. I mean, men and women are really good at doing it. But men and women, I mean, sorry, men specifically are, are really great at doing that. Like right. having something that they're trying to accomplish and complete, having a goal and achieving it. And it, exactly what you said, when you distract from the task at hand, yeah. which freaks them out by themselves yeah, yeah, yeah. and you make it fun and engaging. And as part of a team, like we're buddies now doing this together, right. that makes it easier for them to do and accomplish. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's an issue. And then once the anxiety, once the anxiety is overcome, then you gotta, you, you gotta build. The other thing is I find that the, the insecurity that is there is their personal insecurity and women a lot of times women are not even interested they don't they're not even aware of this insecurity that you have they because if you think about yeah. it every every woman every woman I, I say this to guys all the time you, you talk to a woman and she dates you right how does she know you and guys are like, oh, you know maybe she could tell I go no you tell her she, who you tell her who, who you, you are, are. You tell her mm-hmm. what your value is and so on and so forth. So it's interesting that you, but when you're, but when you, when you have low self-esteem and you, you don't think that you have value, you also communicate that. Yeah. Cause you don't know who you are and right. you don't know how to communicate it properly. Cause you're trying to adjust it for somebody else's benefit. Right. So right. it's not going to come across properly and sincere. And so, it's yeah. also, it's also interesting because when you speak about the instinctual aspect of this which is which i thought that i think that i don't know if you've ever thought about this but you know when decept- deceptiveness to a woman uh or, or, or i shouldn't say that but um indecisiveness mm-hmm. is like, perceived as as uh deceptive it's, it's perceived as deceptive so if you're indecisive it's like why why are you not telling me i know there's more to this and so now a woman has to constantly think about this all the time is who's the guy who every time a woman goes out with a guy, she has to consider whether she was she could be raped or killed. I mean, Absolutely. that that is or get so, pregnant Absolutely. or any number of things yeah. could happen. But the yeah. your your indecisiveness is read as indeceptive, being deceptive. Deceptive is read as dangerous and dangerous is read as, like I, I got to get out. I'm, I don't even want to hear what you have to say. You make me feel uncomfortable. And a lot of times that's they don't interesting because that that was a that was a point I used to make a long time ago that I totally forgot about, like mm. She's reading it in her own way. So if yeah. you're nervous, you're jittery, you're like wishy-washy, you're all over the place, you're not really giving answers, you're just asking questions, she's not going to say, oh, that's so sweet, he's so nervous. She's going to say, get me the hell away from this guy. Sure. Yeah, He makes yeah. me feel uncomfortable. Yeah. If you yeah. feel uncomfortable, she's going to feel uncomfortable. And I think the, the other thing is the empathy from the guy to understand that, okay, I'm nervous and stuff, but what am I really communicating? Like you have to teach the empathy to go, if look, my intention is not to communicate this. 
And 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 so it's, it's interesting because in the whole Me Too era, guys are like, oh, you can't say anything. And I go, that's so not true. You can say everything. You, you just got to be you can honest say so much more now. That's yeah. the wonderful thing, because it's given it's given room for all this communication because people are trying to be more respectful and more clear with each other. So even mm. for guys that I work with, I tell them to announce the elephant, because for me, if I say out loud, I'm really nervous right now. So most podcasts that I get onto right away, I'll say I'm nervous because that I don't instead of trying to cover it up in some right. way for myself, that's going right. to come across as insecure or exactly what you just said, indecisive, wishy washy. But mm -hmm. if you say I'm kind of nervous, it's endearing, it's human, and then you can relate to it, move past it, and then you can talk more freely. So if some guy is nervous about kissing a girl, you can say, oh, I, I'm, I'm thinking about kissing you. I'm a little bit nervous to do it. Like mm -hmm. that, that can be genuine right. and authentic and sincere. And it can be attract. It's attractive too. It's it can, um, and attractive and super sexy. I had a, uh, I got a guy that was pretty famous and I consult him and uh, he said, you know, and he was, he was doing my program and then he, he, he you know, he started really feeling himself and then something, well, he kind of, kind of shut down where he wasn't, he wasn't laying the five bricks and he got, and he goes, man, I seen this girl, she was on the train and she was looking at me and I was looking at her and it was almost like she was looking at me like, come on, do it. Like, I'm yeah. like, come on, bag me up. Like, <laughs> come on, I'm making, I'm giving you the, and he just. He just couldn't he just couldn't do it. So it's interesting. I, I, you know, I say this all the time that fear, fear exists between when the opportunity is presented and how long it takes you to access the opportunity. Oh, I love that. The longer you take to access the opportunity, the more the fear grows and then ultimately it paralyzes mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. And I said to him, he says, yeah, I mean, she just kept looking at me like bag me up. I like I, he, it's I'm, funny that he knew that as well, yeah. like that he wasn't he wasn't translating it for himself as oh don't approach me I'm no, not no, no. With you. like he said you're you're giving me a green light I'm paralyzed and I can't do it that's crazy <laughs> and I said to him what if you had just went to him it's like I really want to hit on you but it, I'm nervous and yeah. and I and he goes I go do you understand do you not understand how attractive that is to a woman that you're saying you're saying that her beauty or or the the, the aura that she presents is so is so powerful that it mm -hmm. make it frightens me a little bit and to say that makes you not frightened of it you know what I, mean? I mean even the way that you just said that is super sexy i would be responsive to any guy who said that and that also empowers the person saying it because yeah. oh, yeah. you get comfortable afterwards because <laughs> you're saying it out like, loud uh, right like, damn shorty i'm scared of you <laughs> <laughs> Sexy. Andre, Andre, did, sexy. Andre did a dance. He like, yo, for real, I want to talk to you. The scariest bitch I ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> yo, I'm saying your beauty is like you got me, you got me twisted. Word. Oh, so <laughs> you right now. But it's like, and then when I said to him, do you understand how that is perceived? How that would mm -hmm. be perceived by her? That not only are you you are you're honest because every woman, you know, honesty it breeds that safety. But the honesty in the fact of your vulnerability makes you not vulnerable. Mm -hmm. Like to represent that and to say that is is something that's that's yeah. Really that's you can't you can't, con you can't continuously say that. Like yeah. you can say that first yeah, yeah, to calm yeah, yourself yeah. down, and then you got to get the confidence back up afterwards. You right, can't just right. be like, oh, now I can't answer your question because you're still intimidating me. Then it's right. like get the echo. I don't yeah, know yeah. if I can now, swear, you, but like, like get away. I let you. Want. I let you in. Yeah. You're in, and now you you've ruined it. Ticket to ride. Now you're going. Yeah. <laughs> then you be over. like, yo, you be running. Yeah. Over. I love how you run. You've been <laughs> running through my mind all day. you like, right. uh, give me, beat yeah. it. And then she's like, no, I'm getting off at this stop. I never want to see you again. <laughs> totally. Yeah. It's it's an interesting, really interesting. Um, Marnie, uh, how you've been doing? You said this for about 17 years now. Mm -hmm. What Long are the. Time. What is the biggest change? I mean, it's a, I feel like th this generation is massively different. What are the biggest changes you've seen in dating? I mean, obviously, social media has come into play. So that is the that's the biggest change that I've and, and online dating and app dating. That's the biggest change. So there's way more insecurities. Um, there's way more people who who treat other people like just ghosts in an, in a in a uh, virtual space that they can treat horribly. So there's a lot more people. When you um, wait, explain that. What do you mean in, in terms of like, like I just mean that when you're on a dating app, nobody's real until you yeah. see them in person. When you yeah. have a face to face yeah. interaction, you're like, yeah. you're a real person. I can't really be a full jerk to you. I can mm -hmm. be a semi jerk to you mm -hmm. and tell you I have a boyfriend and I'm not interested.
ghosted, yeah. but online you can chat with them, ghost them for three weeks, come back to them again, talk to them for two seconds, ghost them again. Like you can do a lot of a lot. things. So I just think that either there's thicker skin that's been What'd built up for Andre? people who, what? What'd you Andre? say, Dre? I did that ghosting shit a bunch. <laughs> I, exactly, Yo, but Trey, like so, you a piece of shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't never intentional. It was just I just forget. Yeah, Dre literally. It just happens. Everybody true. does it. I, don't really okay. I was just though. talking. I was talking to my aunt who is like in her sixties, and she dates online, and she goes. She's the sweetest person. <laughs> Everybody goes. It just yeah. happens because they. You just think these are just like not real people, and you can just like say, "I don't want to talk to you anymore." I, I don't know. If, I don't. Let me ask you this: Do you really think it's ghosting if you forgot? I don't think that's. I think ghosting is sort I of mean, an. To the, it's to an the person who's thing. not getting the response, it doesn't right? Yeah, they're but, like, "Ah, yeah, where did you go?" Right. Yeah, it's ghosting. Yeah. We were yeah. having. And, we had a four-hour conversation last night. Yeah. Where did you go? Why? And if you have a general conversation on the internet, hell, the fuck no, no. No, who's that, doing these things? Why? Lots of people, I've had and great, it's not a good I've idea. Had great. I mean, th that's right. how I met. Go play a video game, dude. The fuck's I've, your problem? Dre, <laughs> well, we've been on. We've you, been on Andre. for f almost forty minutes now, and you've only said eight words since we've been. On because Sunday. I was being respectful. Y'all was being He's all technical, talking about people's struggles and stripes, yeah. and I don't give two shits about it. So I can't oh, say Jesus. nothing. But I, uh, Andre, right? I, I've met several women online and and the girl I'm I'm with now, my girl, no, I met I her online you can't completely. Meet a person online. I'm talking about just being You're talking about wasting four hours chatting. being a pen yeah, pal with somebody and not chatting. having anything. Yeah, I don't know. I've made some good uh -huh. connections. How long? How long would people. you say you move from line to, you know, when when can I see you? Like pretty in much your, not way. you, Dre. Not we're not talking about you. You do it. Uh, oh. you go to their house and ring their bell. <laughs> <laughs> well, how long would you say? I mean, if you're talking for longer than four days online without having a next plan of having either a virtual call or a meeting in person, then you're That's wasting your time. Right. It's, yeah. it's it's okay. far too drawn out. And it also depends what age category you're in. So if you're younger, if you're like in your 20s, then you take like one, maybe two days chatting online and then you, you escalate to that next level. If you are in your 30s or 40s, single parent, you take a little yeah, bit longer because and why you would you say as, as often oh, as are you saying just for logistics reasons just because time i just don't that people are not using it as often but i think like the thing is you know when you click with somebody you know when you yeah. want to take something to that next level yeah and you you do it and if you're unsure yeah. of it then you also take it to that next level so if you're chatting with somebody you're like i'm not Stop really sure if i time. like this person great Stop wasting your time or go hop on a phone call go up on go hop on a virtual call and see am i attracted to them do i like them in 3d then you can mm -hmm. make the decision and then don't waste your time meeting them in person. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a, it's a weird thing when you find guys, a lot of times they think that the girl is doing them a favor. They think yes. by giving really their time and, and the reality is that no woman, uh, like I will say this all the time. No woman dates a guy who she doesn't think is better than her. Now, better is a relative term. I agree from her perspective. I agree. Um, so agree. better is whatever she perceives is better. So I always tell the story. I remember I was like 23 years old and I was dating this, this. She was like 35, 37. And she was a detective and she had a condo and she had a Benz and a this and that. But with all of that she had, um, she was still very uh, worried about everything. Worried about, I mean, she made great money. She had a great house. She got a great car. But it was just like, well, what's next? It was just like Chicken Little. And I had, had nothing. I was, uh, huh? You had a gun? Yeah, she had a nine, a Glock. Oh, shit. Yes, yeah, son. Pantsuits and shit. Pantsuits with the badge on the hip. Mad yeah, sexy uh, with the bat and the, and the button down white shirt. You know, like on uh, Law yeah. and Order. Y'all never played banks and guns and robbers and shit? With thigh that? highs on, son. Oh. Put the gun on and some thigh highs. But we'll That's talk about that lady. <laughs> <laughs> I used to pull her in and frisk her. Like, oh, get up there and spread them. Hey. Hey, I uh, found two grams on you. You're going down. Yeah. Dante would do it the wrong way. Be like, I need information. Oh I need names. <laughs> <laughs> Bang her head uh, against the wall. Like, yeah. You don't want to know what I'm doing. Look what we have found in here. Nine and a half inches. How did, where did you stuff that? Um, so the, but it's interesting 
what she liked about me uh, in retrospect was that I didn't give a fuck. Like yeah. I didn't have no money. I didn't have nothing. And I didn't give a fuck. She had everything, yeah. but she worried about everything. And so she liked the fact that I was just, yo, it'll be fine. Like any one of the yeah. things that she thought was you a had crisis. something she wanted. Yeah. For yeah. Sure. And so in her that's, mind, that, that, that goes back to David Buss's stuff of higher value. Like that yeah. is that is part of social status. That's part of, of value, perceived social value. You don't give a shit, which means that you can breeze through life a lot easier and different opportunities would come your way. That's attractive to women. Yeah. Yeah. That's a that's what I find is a difficult thing about about Indian men and 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 Jewish men is because they they give a shit is they under- about everything. Oh, what'd you say? Yeah? Andre said something. I didn't hear you. What'd you say? No, I, I said I didn't know. I was asking if. Yeah, was, it's because it's got, culturally, it's culturally, yeah. it's like you got to. What about, you know, it's their mothers. Yeah. Give, what, oh, what was give the shit about what? Everything. Everything. About the family, the family, uh, what the family will think, what the neighbors will think. Like, remember, we had Neil Nanda on and he yeah. talked about how, like, how gossipy the entire Indian culture is like, you know, the big thing would be like, oh, Rajneesh got a C in his math test, like yeah. just everything. Yeah. And oh, yeah. it, okay, it's okay. if you Very play into that Jewish world. Yeah. 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 If you decide to live that life. But then when the people are the freest is when they go, oh, I don't I don't give a fuck about that. I'm not I'm yeah. not doing that no more. Also, also immigrant parents are like that. Yeah. It's it's okay. especially when they come from a, from a, a culture where it's about survival. And yeah. then, you know, our generations come becomes more about self-fulfilling happiness and stuff. And and when you have like first generation immigrants that come from anywhere, Greece or crazy ass Armenian or whatever the fuck you from Armenia. It they, is Armenia. <laughs> I mean, there's no mystery here. I've announced it. You and the Kardashians, right? Yeah. <laughs> but that 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 Africans too, uh, uh, Ghanaians and Africans, Nigerians. It's we don't care what you like. You have to survive. And where there's there's this whole other perspective now. It's like Harry, what you were talking about in terms of the difference in culture. It's yeah. now where well, what is what's going to make me happy? What what fulfills me? What do I feel good about? And then that's an American ideal. Yeah. Happiness is an American idea. I remember one time when I was talking to my dad, I go when I was a little kid, because we were supposed to write down what our dreams were for the future. I go, <laughs> what did you were a kid? What were your dream? You know, what what were your dream? What did you dream you wanted to grow up to be? He goes dreams. I didn't have a dream. Know, right. We didn't have any dreams. I kept pressing him. He goes, one time I had a dream. I was eating a sandwich. OK, go away. <laughs> I don't necessarily agree with that part. The whole What's that? The happy, and then back home you were like begging for food. What do you mean? Not, I don't. Not I don't from see. my family point. No, of view. they they just didn't focus on it. Like I I was just watching a show recently where the main character is American and she moves to Paris and they yeah. say the same thing. She's like, we don't give a shit about happiness. Like this is yeah. not what we focus on. We we live we lived no we work to live. Mm-hmm. Not live to work like right. Americans lived. Uh, yeah, it, that's why we're always pursuing happiness because we're working all the time. We don't have time for it. Dre, you you saying what did you do, what don't you agree? I'm not sure what no, you know. Harry was saying about like how his dad doesn't viewed happiness as an American thing. Happiness is for Americans. And it's like my family, I, you didn't see it that way. When I hear them talk about them coming from Jamaica to here, it was like we came here because we heard this is where they put the money. So he came to get some of the money they put here. <laughs> I want to go to fuck home. This place right. stink. The food is trash. The, the traffic trash. The, the roads trash. Ain't no fucking plants, water, nothing. Give me my money so I can go to fuck home. OK, but here's right. here's yeah. it. But, but that's but, all business. But, but that's kind of yeah. the same thing. I it mean, it's not. No, no, no. Wait, wait, wait. I'm not separate. No, I'm not saying that you I'm not talking. I mean, I think what you're talking about is something to go because they want to Jamaicans always want to go home. They, I, that's why they call it home. They could be here 36 years. They, Jamaica is still home because this shit is like you're doing a bid, man. But what I'm saying is the 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 coming here is a utilitarian decision. Like you said, I'm coming here to get the money. You know, after the fact, right? there's things to accomplish. Yeah, there's things that you something to do. I mean, you don't and you don't have like Jamaican Americans. Uh, it's almost who, like you let go of happiness to come get the money. Right, right. Yeah, that's, that's, what, that's what I'm yeah. saying. That's the but that's, a, that's different from the idea of of happiness is an American thing. 
Huh, fair enough. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. You're right, you're right, you're right. Yeah. Well, the ideal is, yeah, the ideal is. But then again, my, 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 I guess my family came from a poor country. Armenia was not a rich country, neither was Ecuador. Ain't no so black people both... over there. It's sad. That what? <laughs> I mean, no Dre, you could go over the there. You could bad. dominate. You could we're gonna, the, we're gonna get you, you a ticket, the, Dre. You could be the <laughs> Stefan Marbury of Armenia, bro. I mean, I'll literally. Take over. You could play for the Armenian national team right now. <laughs> nah, <laughs> I'm gonna start rapping over there. I ain't shit over here when it comes to rap, but over there, I'll blow the fuck up. You kill mm. it. I'll be yeah. Armenian Jay Z. I don't know if they're gonna have that. They got feta cheese. They got feta cheese in Armenia. Li- yeah, they do. That's their joint. Great. All right, now I might pull up. I fucked with the feta. All right. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, it's an interesting that cons, cons, you know the. The, how the cultural aspect of it. And I'm, I'm quite sure you've been doing it 17 years and you start to see these patterns in different cultures that you don't see in other uh, in other cultures. You know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. Mm. And I, I see the same patterns that you see. Also, like a, a lot, a lot of people who are Asian have the same thing. Like, yes. Um, yeah. Korean. Yeah. They, they All have Asians. The same, yeah. I don't, Play I don't want violin. to say insecurities, but they have the same like. Yeah. Mm. It's very, the, same, the fam- very the, ordered, the, very the structured ordered expectation also from family is very present yeah. in that culture. Uh, Marnie, uh, yeah. we get a lot of questions about dating profiles and stuff, mostly like, you know, the, the apps and stuff. And I know that's not your primary expertise, but what are the things guys can do to improve like their profiles to just do better with dating online? Because that seems to be, especially with the younger generation, a lot of what they're doing. Well, exactly what you were talking about before, like speaking authentically and uniquely to who that person is, is the best way to write a profile. So I look at profiles all the time. Again, it's not my area of expertise, but I do get to see a lot of profiles. And so many profiles I find are written by men for the women that they're trying to attract Uh rather than them themselves actually writing a profile about what they want and who they are. Okay. So guys forget that they so they make it like very vanilla and boring so that they can appeal to like the masses when actually what works better online is when you bring out your uniqueness you talk about what pertains to you what makes you different the things that you like and you want mm-hmm. and same thing in the pictures that they put that they that guys put up into place a lot of pictures are taken potentially for the women that they're trying to attract the, the pictures they've seen that have the best response like for a profile picture are a guy who's in his element looking slightly off camera. That's the best kind of profile picture to post. Four to five other pictures of them in their element, painting a picture about who they are. Not three selfies in the same pose, not three posed pictures that were taken by a professional photographer. Which you, you can have one of those on there, yeah. totally. Um, and like it's really just... You're showing who you are and what a woman can be a part of. So that's what you got to put out online. And then for now, like right now, I think a lot of people are putting um, their Myers-Briggs types. That's a huge trend. That's how it was like the number one. Their Myers-Briggs type. So it's a personality type. Oh, really? Like, uh, so you know about that? Wrote a book? Yeah, the- yeah, well, it was like it was considered the number one term uh, on OkCupid. They did a study saying that it was a number one term used in people's profiles. Dre, like, do you know about this? What it is? What, yeah, it, what is it? Explain they, what it is. They put like uh, a personality category. They categorize themselves with personality indicators to let people know yeah. where they fall on a list. So kind of like yeah. when when people talk about I'm an A type personality, but it's a yeah, different. It, exactly. it's an, yeah. I think it's foolish. Yeah. I don't think it really. I, I don't. I I kind of agree with you to be honest, mm. but um, there's like a whole science behind it. But I don't know if that's actually going to deter you from actually partnering up with good people because people may interpret it incorrectly. So I kind of agree with you on that. People are now putting whether they're vaccinated. Or not, like those are huge things That's as well. Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Wow, so but, that makes sense though. But yeah, I mean, those are the trends that I'm seeing in profiles. But mainly, what happens when women go online, no matter what age they are, they look at their picture first. They do not care about the profile. If they're not attracted, they swipe left. If they're kind of attracted, they swipe right. Or if they're really attracted, they swipe right. And if they're really attracted, then they will go and look deeper into their profile and see more about that person. And then it doesn't even matter if a woman's attracted to you and you guys do match. You have the next stage, which is actually starting the conversation, which is challenging for a lot of guys. And if you're saying boring, dull things and you're not super hot and attractive, 
then you're not going to get past that next stage either. Right. right. Mm -hmm. And that it's it's interesting how the sliding scale happens based on how 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 well you got a six pack and how looking you are. Yeah. 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 Yeah, You get a free pass. Oh, you're really (laughs) hot. But you said hi to me. Okay, I'll talk to you for a little bit longer. Right. Right. Somebody who's like not as high. You're like, no. Hi. Who says that? Right. I mean, right. but that's also the way it what works about in real Europe? life. Uh, Europe. Exactly. Not a lot. Absolutely. Yeah, Andre R's. will get away with Europe. I'll put your with mad like seven <laughs> R's in that shit. But you know why? You know, but that's why, different. But it's also it's also very honest about who he is. Like you if you put seven R's like four R's is reasonable. Seven <laughs> R's. <laughs> right. Seven R's is absurd. Too much. It says. And, and, and what it says is I don't give a fuck how many R's. I'll use all the R's. <laughs> I don't care what yeah. you think about my R's. And then she goes, wow, he's confident because he uses seven R's. All of this is going on. That's crazy. Huh? I'm just having me a good old time. And, and that's the point. But the point is because you're so comfortable in your skin. I used to tell dudes when they would, you know, like they would like, uh, what you call it? I, 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 I remember I was, was talking to Andrew Schultz and he was like, uh, how do you pick up girls? I go just in the. I go, he, he's already kind of, you know, he always had had some fame. I go, just go and slide in the DM and put a question mark. Just just, just like bong. And she goes, so she goes, looks at your picture, finds you attractive. And she goes, like, what? What is that? What? I mean, hey, I don't And you're like, oh, I got you. You, you already yeah. you're already showing that level of, of interest, you know? I like that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh. Let's let you know you want. Let's wrap up real quick. Yeah, and let's then, go over to the Patreon. Um, like, can you um plug all your stuff first, and then we're gonna go behind the Patreon and and yeah, do a of bit course. Of- if people wanna wanna find out more about me, they can go to winggirlmethod.com. Uh, I have a program called the F Formula, which teaches guys the three phases phases of escalation for flirting. So how to flirt with any woman they want to. So go to theflirtmethod.com. Yeah. And maybe on uh, Patreon, you can let us know a little bit, maybe one or two of those uh, insights into flirting for guys if they okay, follow us over definitely. there at Patreon. And also, um, I want to ask you a question about the mistakes women make over there, too. I'd like to get the other end, the other perspective, too. On I want to I want to also say no, I, really, I will definitely really, talk about that. <laughs> I really want to say I really enjoyed this conversation because one of the things that, I, that there's a so there's a lot of people who do this pickup thing and. Um, and I always feel like the pickup thing is uh, it's gimmicky. It's like and I'm not saying it doesn't work. I'm not, you know, they body language. I, same, I have same opinion. But the, the yeah. uh, but it's unsustainable. not sustainable, not it's sustainable, unsustainable yeah. because you if you still ain't if you think you ain't shit. Well, it's a facade. Yeah. Yeah. At, yeah. at the end of the day, like I mean, but you, ain't, I will you say, ain't shit, have, but now you're wearing a goofy top hat. And uh, Listen, I will say I have been picked up by the top pickup artists in the world and interacted with all of them. I've been voted the number one female pickup artist in the world several times in the past. So that was my world for a short period of time, even mm. though I'm not a pickup artist. And I will say many of them have the confidence to back up their routines. Many yeah. of them do not. Yeah, really? I would really. say more of them. Do have not. you ever you ever dealt? With, let's let's talk about yeah, this. Let's talk about it on the What's Patreon your wall. Instagram or whatever you want to pump that to or no? Oh, or yeah. You- at at wing girl method. But my my YouTube's the most popular. Uh, okay. Tons of videos on there. So just look for wing girl. You'll find me. Drizzle. Your uh, slouch theory. Uh, Andre D. Thompson. Don't don't touch rabbits. I don't know what that means, but OK. Uh, Harry, talk to me. Uh, you can go to my uh, my stuff is at Harry Trajanian uh, and also just follow us over. Follow my YouTube channel and uh, follow us over on the man school stuff at Instagram and TikTok. And most importantly, the Patreon sign up for the Patreon where we do uh, exclusive stuff like this. Uh, we're going to get into some some more cool stuff oh, with Marnie over here behind the paywall uh patreon.com slash man school 202 and i also think i'm on an episode of andre's podcast i don't did that come out yet andre or no yes sir okay you didn't i wish you told me so i could let other people know but not that it matters uh is a fun is a that's a silly ass conversation i had the most fun uh doing that conversation with andre we learned we found out that technically i'm asian so go over there <laughs> and find out for yourself a slouch theory with myself and andre um, I'm, I got to do mine too, Jay. Stop playing. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, everything me, Dante Nero, D A N T E N E R O. You can get me on social media, Instagram, Instagram, the Dante Nero. If you want a consultation to go to Dante Nero.com, click on consult. You can get me there. Uh, everything's there. 
Uh, GYBB, get your balls back. WWDD, what would Dante do? The sexual revolution is being podcasted. Yo, I love y'all. Thank you. Um, don't forget to sign up for the Patreon. Uh, support us so we can keep doing this. Thank you so much. We are out. Man School 202 is created by Dante Nero, hosted by Dante Nero with Harry Turjanian and Andre D. Thompson, produced by Harry Turjanian, executive producers Matt Kleinschmidt, Harry Turjanian, and Dante Nero.